Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. And today I have Amy Singleton with me. I'm so excited to get into this conversation with her. She is definitely a powerhouse uh, located in Oklahoma City and originally an OR nurse, right, Amy? That's right. An OR nurse and through some different events, her own health scare, um, tragically that career ended and she might have said uh, that she was uh, moving away from saving lives, but she's actually saving businesses now, I think, which is really cool. (laughs) Uh, so we're going to get into a little bit more of Amy's story, but, you know, Amy is um, an entrepreneur and she's very passionate about helping other business owners. She's the owner of Height Digital Norman, and she's also the founder and host of her own podcast, which uh, is Queen's Lead. So we'll definitely put a link to her podcast in the show notes for you. And she's making a really big impact on the world. And I'm excited to have you here, Amy, because I know that um, you're going to resonate with our audience, and I know you've resonated with me. So welcome. And Thank you. Let's just hear a little bit more about you and and really what being an entrepreneur means to you, because you know you made a huge shift at one point in your life. So what what does it mean for you to be an entrepreneur and help others to be successful in it too? Yeah, you know, I um I didn't have really an example of an entrepreneur in my life growing up. Uh my grandfather that passed away when I was 5 years old was um the vice president of a company uh that brought water filtration to the world back in the in the late 70s and early 80s. It's really cutting edge, but I didn't other than my my knowledge and history of what he did, I hasn't I didn't have an example of that in my life. So I didn't really know it was possible until I took the leap and did it on my own. Um, And so now being able to see the freedom that we're able to give business owners and entrepreneurs in their lives, that freedom that they, that everyone seeks when they first start out. And then they realize really quickly that they're working a hundred hours a week and way more than they thought. And they had no idea what they didn't know. They just knew that they were really good at this thing, Mm -hmm. at this service, at this product. They had a great widget and, and helping people to, um, you said at first, I have to clarify this at first because I was saving lives, but now we're scaling businesses. I cannot save a business. <laughs> I, I have had many people me. come to me and say, Hey, I've got $2,000. What can you do for my marketing? If, if, if this yeah. doesn't work, that's it. And, and I'm really sorry, but that is absolutely someone I would, um, my ethics are on the level in, especially in my industry, but just as a person, my ethics are really, really high. Um, it, because That's the reason we started this business in the first place is because my husband couldn't find marketers that he trusted. So Mm -hmm. in his businesses, so um, I'm always going to give it to you up front. So we can't, we can't save a business, but we can scale a business. Okay. Good point. Yes. Yes. And watching that happen though, for our clients, when I see them starting off something, maybe it's even a side hustle that they've got some money to invest or, or they've gotten a loan or, or this is their full-time job, but seeing them like leave those full-time jobs and turn these side hustles or turn their small businesses, it really turn it into something where they're providing jobs and impacting their community and providing and serving locally. It's such a joy because the world is so disconnected and we are looking for connection in every way. And to me, that's really the definition of being an entrepreneur is providing in your local community in wherever you're able to serve an impact, providing jobs in that place, providing great products and quality service and, and building communities around businesses. You know, uh, we've gotten away from that. And I, I really enjoy helping that come to fruition for people. Yeah, I love that. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show because <laughs> You really um, speak in the same uh, modality that I do. You know, it's really about, I think, connection. And part of having a business is the ability to serve others and give back. And I know that you're passionate about what you do and to help other people figure it out, right? Um, yeah. it, it had to have been a, a challenge. You know, I I come from the business world. I call myself a serial entrepreneur. Um, but not everyone starts that way and you didn't, you know, so what, what was that transition like for you, um, moving from one career to another and with different, I would assume different structure, different workflow, right? Like me, really. (laughs) 
So, oh, majorly. Yeah. Majorly. I didn't know what I didn't know when I was first starting out, but, um, I had the the benefit of my partner and husband who is a surreal entrepreneur. He's had many businesses in the past. Um, but, and so what I brought to the table was my corporate experience working in hospitals, working for uh, big corporations, um, and having con, you know, gone from the college and, and that route versus like the the bootstrap it up for the beginning and run a mm. business kind of route. Um, so I had the benefit of my husband's experience um, in in kind of knowing what to do. But but the difference is so, so vast, right? Like when you go to a job, there's a set of procedures that you follow to do that job. Now you have this thing that you're good at and it's up to you to develop a set of procedures, which is what most business owners completely skip over from the very get go. In the very beginning is how do I do what I do? What's the right. next step in my business? Um, that sounds really easy, but businesses are years and years into trying to make things work and they sometimes still don't have those things out. Um, and you realize that, you know, you look up one day and like, you're it. When you want to start a business, like you're it, you, your, your name is written in the CEO, the CFO, the, uh, you know, the CMO, every, you know, I answering the phone, secretary, trash. Meeting. Yeah, you call it staff meeting, you're sitting in every seat around the boardroom, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And and you're like, you have to start, you eventually start asking yourself questions like, if I worked for me, how would I review me? How am I spending my time? Right. What am I doing? You're like, oh gosh, it's all up to me. And so, yeah, it's really, really overwhelming. Um, and it's really easy as a business owner to get like what we refer to in the marketing world as shiny object syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because there's something new all the time that you're watching other people and co what your competition is doing and you're trying to More stay ahead so of the today. game. I, you know, there's yes. so much coming More at enough. you, right? hundred percent. All the yeah. time. Constant, and constant I think, comparison. I think most people uh, get started in their own business and you, you said it perfectly. Like you could be so good, right? You're a master at your craft. Mm -hmm. You have this passion, this burning desire to you know, live life through that and help people with your product or your service. But, you know, everything else that comes with running a business starts to creep in and you're like, oh my God, what do I do now? Yeah. And, yeah. and also, I think most people can can say that they start their business sort of alone, right? You're a solopreneur. Yeah. And so that can be scary not to have enough people around sort of in a camp that you can mm -hmm. ask questions and and really just get advice and so I, I would imagine that you're offering a lot of consulting and, and a lot of guidance with the people that you're working with. What's the most challenging part of that in your um, opinion? You know, it's getting to the root problem mm -hmm. because so many people will come and say, I need social media management or I need PPC ads or I need a new website. And so many times they have their focus on that is what they need. And, and sometimes that's not exactly maybe the solution to the problem that they're actually experiencing. So really getting them, um, to open up to me about really where their business is and where they want to take it, you know, um, then I can really take a more strategic and consultative approach, more like a doctor, more like my, my medical background and going, okay, let me take in all the symptoms. Let's see what the vital signs are. Let me check the labs. Let's look at the numbers. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of people are not expecting, a marketer to start digging into their business. But that's one of the very first things I have to know. I need to know the lifetime value of your client. I want to know what last year's revenue is. I want to know what is your goal for this year's revenue. I need to know what your marketing budget is because, you know, I can spend $10,000 a month really effectively. I can spend $2,500 a month more strategically, but mm -hmm. depending on what we're working with, then I can go and determine and say, okay, is the problem lead flow? Is the problem um, lost leads? Are we not following up? Do we need a system to help automate some follow-up? What is it? Where Where's the money lost and where's the opportunity? Um, and then I can sit in that space where I can say, here's what we really need to do. Well, you came to me for Facebook ads, but that's not going to work for you because you're an electrician and people aren't going to Google you on Facebook. You know, it, it's, if we can afford Facebook ads, awesome because that's an mm -hmm. extra audience, but people are not going to social media most of the time to find a plumber and electrician. They're going to right. Google ads, right? You, you have or they're to... going to just regular Google internet. They're wanting, we need, you know, organic ranking, maybe ads, something like that. But, but Facebook ads wouldn't necessarily be the solution. And sometimes people think that's what they need because maybe it's the thing that they feel weakest in or the thing they feel like they don't know enough about. 
Um, but really, there, there's a lot more data to, to take in and consider when we're looking at solutions to problems. Yeah, you have to fish in the right pond, right? You have to know mm -hmm. where your audience is. And I think that something else that a lot of entrepreneurs know they need to do, but are struggling, at least in, in my experience as a business leader and as a coach, is what's my brand, right? What is my personal brand? What is that story or message? Uh, how do I attract people to me? Um, what are some things that you might want to share with the listeners today? A lot of our listeners are in business for themselves and entrepreneurs. And what if that's a question that is keeping them up at night? Is there anything that you would share, uh, obviously, without having the ability to sit down with them one-on-one, -on -one, but what is the first thing someone could do in trying to figure out, like, what is my brand? Yeah. Um, you know, your brand is not just a logo. It's mm -hmm. not just your colors. It's not just... Um, it's just not your visual concept, right? When you think about things like Coke, you get a feeling like, you know what they're all about. When you think about Nike, you know what they're all about. People don't even have to have to think about it anymore because they've developed a community around it, right? Have a, have a Coke. It's like family. It's fun. It's, it's um, high energy, right? Um, so thinking about the people that are your very best consumer, you know, you want to think about what it is that they're thinking about, what it is that that they're feeling, what are they interested in, and and try really hard to not tell your story, but their story and allow them to see themselves in the story that you're telling. And that's the way that you make them feel. That's the way, um, it's the tone of voice that you use, the language that you use, um, constantly giving out that message of again and again, um, it's not just putting your logo on something, right? It's like invoking that feeling and making them come into a community with you. Um, and that works better for some brands, you know, lifestyle brands, it's much easier mm -hmm. to do than if you're an attorney, right? Uh, but regardless, you have to be speaking the right language, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to be speaking the right language um, for people to hear. Because like we said before, our attention spans are so short and oh, unless yeah. something is speaking to to, to a problem that we're having that we need to solve that, that we need to thrive and survive through. It's just, it's all noise. You know, we For have sure. 8,000 advertisements coming at us every day. Which one oh, do yeah. you remember? Right. Oh, exactly. None. So do I have I'm, a leaky faucet? I might remember that plumbers, you know? Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, so I'm going to shift gears a little bit, maybe, maybe turn the tables a little bit, you know, as an entrepreneur yourself, um, what do you find is your biggest challenge right now being in business for yourself? Um, my biggest challenge, um, probably delegation. Mm. You know, I think, I think a lot of leaders struggle with that. Um, we have an excellent team, um, but there's sometimes, um, I still can't let go of a few things that need to my eyes on them at least, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just really getting, getting people trained up to, to sit in all those seats where your name used to be, right. um, you know, and developing leaders. Um, it's really, it's really hard. Um, it's really a hard thing to navigate when you're always, um, the leader and then you have to delegate people to lead. And, and sometimes, like we said a little while ago about, um, you know, when you start in your business and you realize all these other things that start to show up that you need to know or learn in order to own a business, suddenly you realize, okay, to scale, I need help, right? I need uh -huh. to hire people, whether it's going to be an employee or a consultant or, or someone who's going to be on my team. And then you're suddenly working with other people and you have to develop your leadership qualities too, because now they're looking to you for that guidance. So it's never ending the learning curve. Absolutely. Constantly yeah. learning. Yeah, absolutely. What would you say is your biggest opportunity right now, Amy? What are some things that you're working on? What are some things that you're excited about? You know, 2024, we're just getting into, you know, almost the end of the first quarter already. Um, so yeah. what are some things that you're excited about? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that. Um, you know, I'm really excited about um, just being more upfront in the media um, I actually had an interview today with a woman who's including me in a chapter uh, in her book. Um, she's already a best-selling author um, and is writing a book about, you know, women overcoming and empowering stories of women and their stories. And I get a whole chapter dedicated to me in that. And I'm, I'm so honored and, and blessed that, that that's happened for me. That's um, awesome. <clears throat> 
But, um, you know, I've had a few people approach me about writing a book. I'm not sure exactly what that looks like, but that's an exciting opportunity. Um, and, and speaking, you know, just more public speaking. Um, I was blessed to be able to keynote, um, a couple of women's business conferences last year, just on the, on the subjects of motivation and, and encouragement, but also, you know, speaking on the topics of marketing, I'm going tomorrow morning to speak uh, to a group of business owners about, about their Google business listings, about the things that people just need desperately need education on because there's so much education out there. It's hard to know what to believe and what's right and what's wrong. And so, um, really positioning myself just in, in a place of service. I love to educate people, um, and, and really helping more and more businesses scale. I'm just really excited about the opportunity to do that. Yeah. I, I love all the things that you're working on and things that you're connected to. So your purpose, your purpose comes through loud and clear. Um, I think, how do you articulate your purpose? If I was to ask you to put it in a sentence or two, because I think that'll uh, yeah. a lot of people also. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I made a, a purpose statement. It's been about two and a half years ago and it, it's remained very constant. Um, and it's, it's that I'm committed uh, to bringing hope and purpose to people who have failed. So why is that important I to have you? Failed a lot. Have you? Because I've failed a lot. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've failed so much. I've, I've failed myself and I've been failed by others. And I think that failure holds us back so much in our life. And there's so much hope and purpose beyond that. Um, and, and an opportunity for us to learn and grow and develop and change and become completely different yes. creations. Um, you know, my faith is really important to me. Um, and I, I give all the glory to God that I am sober for six years. Now I used to be almost six years. I used to be almost 300 pounds. I was, uh, you know, in a very, very dark and desperate place. Um, through a divorce and a lot of health challenges and things. And I've just continued to overcome and overcome those and they've molded me and shaped me into who I am. And so I know that I have a responsibility to raise my hand and say, I was depressed and now I'm not, I was an alcoholic and now I'm not, I was this and now I'm this, and it's for you too. Whether that be yes. in your personal life and your motherhood and your marriage and your business in your faith, um, there's a better path for you and regardless of your failures or the failures of other people and outside forces on you. Yeah. And if it's okay to share, you know, your story is just so it resonates with me because I failed a lot too. And, um, we all have a story and, um, you know, I've been through a lot of trauma in my life too. I'm a survivor of domestic violence. And, um, uh, even though that relationship and I moved out of that relationship 25 years ago, you know, you you live with the, with the remnants of it in different ways and you, you know, have to make a decision about how you want your story to play out now in the next chapters. Right. That's right. And, and I, I just, from, from my experience, I believe our stories at some point meant for other people that mm -hmm. we, right. Do you feel like that too? Oh my gosh. That's all it's for. I mean, how, how could I not? I mean, I spread my story like it's the gospel. Like I want a better life for other people when I see them hurting the way that I, that I was hurting. Yeah. That's like my only responsibility is to how, how selfish of me to hide that from someone. Mm. So if I, you're I out there that. and you have a story, if you're out there and you have a story, you have a talent, you have an ability. How dare you hide it from your neighbor? How dare you hide your joy from someone that needs that today? It's not I, up to you. I your story is you. for others. This is why I'm so happy you're on the show because listen, I, I, in some ways I wish I'd met you 10 years ago because. <laughs> no, you don't. Me. You don't want to meet me 10 years ago. Oh. That was terrible. <laughs> I understand. But you know what you're saying, has, what you just said. I believe it so completely today. And I'm not afraid to tell you, it took me a little while to really yeah. embrace that. That's yeah, why I too. like you, right? Really passionate about helping other people through what we do. The podcast is a platform. Our teaching, coaching, right, is, is all a platform because life is short and we nothing's promised us. We don't know, right, what mm -hmm. tomorrow brings if we have tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, right now is we do have this gift. We have this opportunity to create connection. I feel connected to you in this conversation. I think that there are people listening who feel connected to you because of what you're saying. And that is powerful. And, and the littlest thing 
could just make such a difference in one person's life if we're not afraid to share and if we're not afraid to be vulnerable and say, hey, I'm a hot mess and maybe you are too, but you know, or, Hey, I'm, I'm a survivor of whatever, because I failed forward. I made mistakes. I learned, I, I was in pain or whatever addiction, whatever the story is. Yeah. It's part of creating. I I think that's what legacy really is. Mm. Right. You know, people talk about legacy in terms of money or businesses and that's true Mm. yet our story is a legacy. Mm, It absolutely is. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. It's the only thing we have. It's the only language we speak back to caveman days, the story we hadn't even, we didn't, before we had a language and writing and and alphabets, we told stories verbally to one another and they were passed down, you know, over and generation over generation. And um, it's those stories that we can recall of, of our ancestors and our family members and our friends overcoming that, that spur us on to overcome more. Were you always comfortable being um, vocal and sharing your story or talking, you know, to people? Really? No, no. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, I, I say you're very outgoing. I mean, yes. I hope you, I hope some of you guys watch this on YouTube or follow, follow Amy because she's larger than life when you see her and she's got this amazing energy and, and just this vibration. And so I would have assumed that was always there from when you were a child. I would say the light has always been there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have always been, I was the little girl that was labeled too much, uh, too loud, shh, tone it down, be quiet, sit down, shut up, go away, be quiet, whatever. I hear you, uh, girl. That was me. <laughs> uh, you know, I was a goofy kid, um, but I was really, I mean, I was chubby and I was awkward and I didn't know how to handle the me inside me. I didn't even know what that was. Um, mm-hmm. And I was, you know, I was, I was quieted and hushed a lot um, because I was very vocal and, and loud and I'm not, I, when we moved into a neighborhood, I went door to door. I was this, like summer before third grade. We're like nine, 10 years, nine years old going door to door. Do you have any little kids or grandkids I can play with? Hi, my name's Amy. We just moved in. I mean, that's me. Okay. My mom's like, what is she doing? I was crazy, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, like, and, and then throughout, you know, age 10, 12 up to teenagerhood, that was really hushed, you know, but yeah, I was still, I was in drama and choir and I was the mascot at my high school and I was still a lot, but I, my, my confidence was zero during that time. My confidence as a little girl was really, really high. And then by the time I was a teenager and kids are mean and I was fat and you know, the whole world sucked. Um, I was definitely, um, my spirit was definitely dampened. It really wasn't until I have to be honest with you. It was not until, these past probably five years that I've really stepped into loving me, loving that little girl, me having out loud conversations with that little girl, talking to her, telling her she was okay. She wasn't too much. She's perfect the way she is. All of your dreams can come true. You're going to be on a stage one day, just not how you think it's going to be. You know, I was the little girl telling people, with full confidence when I was little that Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers were my real parents. And I would say it right in front of my very ordinary, actual real parents, because I knew I was destined for something. Anna. I was destined yes. for the stage. I didn't, it didn't come the way I thought it was going to come. Think maybe you and I were <laughs> separated at birth. <laughs> Learn, I know, right? Like I feel this kindred spirit because I was, I was nuts. And I used to say things like, I'm a hot mess. I'm crazy. I'm too much. I'm too loud. And I was at a business um, mastermind and I'll wrap up with this, with this story. Cause this was like the culmination of it all. I'd already started my marketing agency. I wasn't hardly telling anyone about it. Cause I was terrified. It was taking work from anybody that would pay me to do anything they'd pay me to do. <laughs> and I was so unsure of myself. And I was at this little business mastermind uh, with my, my kind of inner circle people. And there was this lady talking there about branding and personal branding and putting yourself out there on social media. And I was so excited because I've been following her already like online and she's like this influencer. And so I walk up to this tiny little Indian woman and she's like all but four foot 11, maybe. And I was like, hi, my name is Amy. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know I'm a lot. I mean, I've been following you. I'm so excited to meet you. I just like, I don't know what to do, but oh, I'm so much. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Amy. It was like something like that. It was awful. Uh-huh. And she's just tiny riot grabs me by my arms like hard. And she's looking at me. I'm five, five. And she says, I know that people have told you you're too much your whole life, haven't they? And I was like, 
yeah. She said, I don't ever want to hear you say that again. They're not enough for you. Amen. And, <laughs> and I was just like, what, what? Like, I knew yeah. that like my husband and my, some of my friends had told me that in the past and it, but for some reason in that moment from that tiny woman, it just clicked. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And she's like, you can't be friends with all like 6 billion people anyway. Like, why would you even want to be with someone that doesn't like you for who you are? That doesn't like that, that yes, you cuss yes, and yes. you love Jesus. That doesn't like that you have tattoos. That doesn't like your nose ring. Why would you try and fit in around these people that aren't your people, Amy? Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, like it blew my mind. It really blew my mind. And so what from that gift. moment what forward- an absolute gift. I will always credit that woman with that gift because well, now you're really... passing it on because someone is literally crying yeah. listening to me right now, saying I'm she's talking you. to me. And, and you know, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, don't. No, it's just such a great conversation. And you know, I know we might have started out talking about marketing yet. It all is. It's about telling your story, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Right? I mean, like I just said this on my podcast. I was recording before this. Like people are we're disconnected right now. Like we're more connected than ever on social media, sort of, but we're disconnected and people are desperate for community and connection. And yeah. so many people are trying to separate their business from their personal life and this and that. And well, I don't know how it is for a nine to five or anymore. Cause it's been a long time since I've been that, but business ownership is a spiritual journey. Like if nothing else, it is so deep. It is so dependent upon relationships with the, your inner circle, with your people, with your mentors, with your clients. It It's so important. And you can't have anything other than an integrated life in that situation. It's not this and that it's I agree. all of it. Um, I agree. And as a coach, you know, that's, uh, I, I don't know. I started my, my journey in being a coach probably 15 years ago. And I mean, I started as a business coach working with small um, business owners and entrepreneurs because that's the world I was in. Yet yeah. I very quickly connected back to my own personal growth journey and knowing that you are your business. And like you said, it is to your heart and soul and you you can't disconnect those two things. And I think mm -hmm. your business only grows as much as you will grow and yes. get clear oh, about, yes. right? And get clear yeah. about like, who am I in this crazy frenetic world, right? Who mm -hmm. who am I and what do I wanna what do I wanna put out into the world? What do I wanna um stand for and how do I show people that light that I have? And because it is there, we've all had it. And yeah. Why do we allow ourselves to play small? You know, and I think, listen, I know I have a lot of guys that listen to the podcast, but I'm just going to say, I think it's a, it's one of the challenges as women that we sometimes really struggle with, right? We tend to play small and we we have to stand in our own truth and, and find our power in that because then you yeah. really connect with your purpose and mm -hmm. then you can connect with other people who just want a little bit of the same. Yeah. And I think the thing that gets it for women versus men, and my husband and I have talked about this extensively, we're partners in business, we're partners in, again, fully integrated life with each that other. That might be another episode. <laughs> How is it to be in business with your husband? <laughs> it's wonderful. It's so wonderful. Good. I mean, and I'm probably one of the only people that would ever say that, but we work very well <laughs> I'm sure together. it takes work. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. It takes work. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Sorry. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. Like women and men, my husband and I have discussed this. Guys. Like men, they literally DGAF, like they don't care what other people think about the way they look, about their body, about their clothes, about their hair, about their eyebrows, about their eyelashes. Are you joking me? Like they don't care with us. And and I think to some extent, there this obviously is going to apply to some men or everybody. But my mentor said to me one time, it's not what I think about me that matters. And it's not what you think about me that matters. It's what I think you think about me that matters. Hmm. It's what I think you think about me. I'm worried about what you're thinking all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And people are not thinking about us as often as we think. It's important to make a good first impression. It's important to not be a jerk. It's important to not put your foot in your mouth and, and try to be kind. But ultimately, they are not thinking about what we're thinking. They're worried about what they're doing. As worried as you are about what you're trying to do, everyone else is just as worried about what they're trying to do. So for sure, giving yourself a little grace and being a little more fearless with your actions in business and in personal life, I mean, quit giving so much of a heck. You know, we really have to. And that's hard. It's so hard. It is hard. It is hard. So Amy, what are some things that you do to sort of fill your bucket? You know, because we just talked about 
personal growth being a big part of our professional growth. So what are some things that you do to, you know, just, you know, sharpen your own tools in your toolbox, but more importantly, self-care and, you know, get the things that you need to, to just continue doing all this work? Yeah. Um, well, the very first thing I do, I would say is I really try and live my life by the 80, 20 rule, mm. you know, things like I commit to working out three days a week. And I, I almost always do that. If I get a little bit more great. Um, you know, I, I have cut out caffeine for my diet. Um, but I still, you know, eat some chocolate. <laughs> I, you know, I, um, Thank I goodness. only eat fruit before noon, uh, most of the time. Uh, my husband and I are constantly in a state of learning something new together. So last year we learned how to scuba dive. We got scuba dive certified and went on a couple of dive trips together. Um, this year, our, the last about three to five months has been sourdough bread baking. So oh, we are so cool. very much, we have our, our little grandma sourdough starter. We bake with her weekly. Um, we love going to the farmer's market on Saturdays and feeding ourselves local nutritious food. I just found that that helps me a lot with my autoimmune disorders. Um, uh, we go to church. I read my Bible. Uh, that's a fairly new development for me, even though um, um, I've been, you know, in and out with him for a good long while. And it feels really good to be back right now. Nice. Um, so I read, I listen to podcasts. I talk to women like you all the time on my podcast. That fills my bucket, getting to hear their stories. Um, you know, and I just, I really try to pour into my community. I'm, I'm pretty involved. Um, but, uh, but it sounds like you're very mindful. You're purposeful about it. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I serve, I'm the vice president of a board here in Norman, Oklahoma called the, uh, of a, an organization called the Virtue Center. It's a 50 year old organization that um, is an outpatient um, addiction recovery center. So that's really important to me that other mm -hmm. people find what I've found. So I serve in that way. Um, and I help host their podcast as well to help get the word out about what oh, they're doing. Great. Um, you Don't know, and not all of it's business. I ride my bicycle down by the lake and we like to go down to the Oklahoma river sports and, and do, um, do the whitewater rafting. And, um, you know, occasionally you'll find my husband and I occasionally skydiving. Um, oh my, wow. <laughs> he used to, he used to be a, a skydiving instructor. So he's taught me that, um, we learned, I, like I said, we learned scuba diving together. Um, and we really love just educating our community. We've recently, um, I'm excited about a local magazine that we're publishing an online magazine to help um, connect local businesses to the community. And so we like have a Facebook group where we're connecting people and doing giveaways and How just trying to, to local down. <laughs> um, but Joseph, my husband gets five. He's a five a night guy, feels great with five. I'm more like a seven girl. I'm, I need about seven I'm just hours. kidding. Cause it's down, you know, it's just someone listening. It would probably be, I'm sure there's someone saying, wow, how does she do it all? Yeah. I think yeah. when you love what you do and you find that, that passion, right. It, yeah. it just doesn't seem like a lot of work. And I, I, I love what you shared here. So many really, I think important lessons that you've shared. And I, I do want to circle back while we still have a few minutes um, to your podcast, um, like you, I listen to a lot of podcasts and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to start my own, because I find that it is a way to connect and share and, yeah. you know, teach and learn as well. Um, mm -hmm. so what inspired you to start your podcast? And again, that's Queens lead, right? That is right. Queens lead. We put I love crown it. When, when we say leaderly things, um, <clears throat> you know, I just, Especially in my space in, in digital marketing and in marketing in general, um, it's a very, it's very male dominated world, um, you know, and I find that there, there were a lot of um, resources for like women in business and like teaching and coaching and other stuff, but there wasn't really a place for women to share their stories mm -hmm. of what they're doing, why they're doing it, where they came from and where they are now, you know, women that are, that have exited a lot of my guests and listeners are like people who have, were in the corporate world and then and jumped out and took the leap to their own business. Um, uh, and I just wanted a platform for women to share their stories and be able to connect and inspire each other because, um, there's a lot of women doing really incredible things. And I just, I wanted there to be a platform for them to share that. Fabulous. So while we um, wind down here, is there a question I haven't asked you that you wish I had? Oh man, that's, um, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, 
Well, we really already talked about it. Um, you know, one of the one of the biggest problems that that business owners have in generating their leads is that usually their language is wrong. Uh, you know, you can throw a, so much money at a budget for ads or or social media or something else, but if what you're saying isn't resonating uh, with the with the the consumer, then it will fall in deaf ears. Um, so I think really getting your message clarified um, is is a great idea. Uh, I would recommend the book uh, "Building a Story Brand" by Donald Miller. Uh, that's a framework that we follow uh, at Height Digital. Uh, we became certified last year um, in that in that framework. Um, of storytelling from the perspective of the client. So it's a really great resource. Anything out I'm familiar Miller with Donna Miller. That's great. She's so we'll, absolutely fabulous. We'll link that in the show notes too for people. That's great. Yeah, it's a great book. So Amy, uh, for those people who are really <clears throat> like excited about this conversation and want to follow you or get to know you or maybe work with you, how can they find you? Absolutely. The quickest way is amysingleton.net amysingleton.net. All of my links are there to the podcast, the business, um, it, hire me to speak, whatever. There's a form at the very bottom uh, that if you would like us to take a look at your website, we do this for absolutely free. I'll have my team go and go to your website, do about a three minute video for you, just showing areas of opportunity of things that they can change on their own to make their website function a little better. Um, just drop your, your website URL in the comments there section of that at amysingleton.net. And we'd be happy to get that over for you for free just to help you out. That's a great offer. So um, take advantage of that guys. Mm -hmm. Well, Amy, I'm, this is, I'm at the real, at the real Amy Singleton on all the socials as well. Okay. The real Amy Singleton. And, yeah. um, this was really such a great conversation. Um, you're a badass, and I really appreciate you being on here. I love it. Um, and I'm looking forward to talking with you some more in the future. So thank you for joining me. And I thank all of you for joining us too. It was great. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Thank you.